This lecture looks at the solo growth model and we try to add population growth into the model. I call it basics because it's really taking the basic solo growth model and just adding population growth into it and I can show you how that uh, works. And um, it's really just a mon minor modification but it's important to understand how it works and once you do then you can really use the model the way um, we did in the other lectures. So the first thing is N is our population, and the growth rate of the population is N hat, which is the percentage change or the growth rate of the population. This could be growing at 5%, 5% or 3%, whatever we want. And so it's easiest just to say N. It's growing at some constant rate and, and whatever that is, uh, it's not zero, or it could be zero if you wanna look at no population growth. Now, we'll also generally flip-flop between N and L, because really from any population, there's a constant fraction of people who are in your labor force. So I could write L as some constant fraction of N, where this is the percent of people working. That's sort of like your um, labor force participation rate and your unemployment rate or your employment rate all included in one because it's the fraction of the population working and actually in jobs working. So it's usually pretty constant over time. So let's say 60% or 0.6. Um, so if it's pretty constant, then when you convert this to growth rates, it falls out and you basically get the two growing together. So it makes sense, even if 60% of the population is all that's working, as the population grows, the total number of workers will grow too. So we can kind of flip-flop between these two, especially when we're just looking at general models in a classroom. But it's important to know there is a distinction and we're driving it through this population growth rate which is driving the labor participation growth rate um, as well. Now, what else changes in the model? The key capital accumulation equation, capital accumulation equation in this model is that uh, capital per worker is going to be the amount savings rate times production, which is your investment amount, minus, we used to just put delta and K, but now it includes N for the population growth rate. And in steady state, we're looking at when that is zero. Just a quick reminder, little k is capital per labor, little y is GDP per labor, little s is the savings rate, and delta is the depreciation rate. So in the old world, I would say that your investment rate, when it's just equal to the amount your capital's falling apart, that the rate it's depreciating, when you're investing just to offset depreciation, then your total stock of capital is staying constant. In this case, your investment here investment has to account for two things. One, it has to be enough to offset the percent of depreciation times the total amount of capital. So a bigger building depreciates at 10%. There's more to do than a tiny building depreciating at 10%. So your depreciation, you have to allocate some of your production today just to offset depreciation. Otherwise, your capital stock will shrink. You must now also add capital just due to the new people arriving. So um, additional K for increase N. So the way I like to explain that is if you imagine an office space, um, desks and uh, laptops and chairs and such are your capital equipment. So that building 
if there's no population growth, you have to take some of your money and invest it back into the building just to offset things falling apart, repaint the walls, redo the carpet from time to time, and so on. But if your population is growing too, the number of workers in your establishment is expanding, then you also have to add for depreciation and add new desks just to account for the new people showing up. So that's what this is. So now your investment has to be higher and account for these two things both. Graphically, Our old world looked like this, where that's just the depreciation, but now it is that plus this. So our investment line used to cross here to determine the steady state. This is no population growth, but with population growth, we actually get a drop with population growth. We get a lower steady state level of capital per worker. Why is that? If you think about it for a minute, it makes sense. Little k is big K over L. Total capital divided by worker. What's going on? Yes, you have to have additional output. You're going to have additional workers, so you're going to have additional output. So you're going to produce additional capital. But you're also producing additional people. And so you're getting these people generating output, which also goes to generate capital. But now that's being divided by these two places. So both of these from the output perspective. So the overall capital stock per worker is actually a little lower, the functional capital stock per worker, because some of your output is being diverted just to replenish the old capital stock and supply those new employees.